Madam Secretary, thank you so much for the time. Of course. Before today's event, we were on campus talking with a lot of students. And almost uh, there was a thread that went through all of them that says, what we want to hear is what the action is going to be, what the plan's going to be. You guys talked about a lot of plans that are in motion right now. Mm -hmm. Does that always trickle down totally to does. people? Let me just say, you know, the, the, when you have a specific goal and you align all of the federal agencies and you encourage the states to move toward that goal, it makes the action so much more apparent. So, for example, the goal is to get to 100% clean electricity, meaning um, renewable and clean electricity without carbon pollution by 2035. So what does that mean? If we're going to get to 100%, that means we have to add 2,000 gigawatts, which are huge amounts of electricity to our current grid and expand the size of our grid. How do we do that? Well, we have to decarbonize, meaning we have to move to electrification of vehicles. We've got to increase the deployment of solar. So, for example, since these bills have been passed, there have been 357 announcements of solar farms in this country because of the incentives associated with it. There have been 79 new battery companies that have said they're going to come to the United States, whereas most batteries were made in Asia. So these incentives make manufacturing and generating clean energy in the United States irresistible and people just have to keep reading the paper because every day this is going to this plan is going to bear out and that's my follow-up is is you know we were talking to sustainability students saying what action so is that a messaging thing that gets kind of lost well, in, in the so process of this great point it's a great point this is why we're here I mean we want people to know of the progress that's being made as a result of policy being adopted so for example if you can get if you're a, a solar developer and you can get 30 percent tax credit for developing and generating that solar power you're going to really take notice. If you can get another 10% on that, if you if you pay prevailing wage, mm -hmm. you're going to take notice. If you if you can locate near a, a disadvantaged community that has been left behind, that's like a 50% tax credit. It makes it irresistible. And so those kinds of tax credits embedded in all kinds of clean energy are causing all of these announcements to happen across across the country. Yesterday, there was an announcement that the large, a very large global solar cell manufacturer is coming to the United States and is building the largest solar panel factory in the United States. That happens to be going to Georgia. It's not to Michigan, but nonetheless, it's the largest producer of solar panels. Where were they before? In Asia. So we are bringing that capability of manufacturing back to this country as a result of policy that was signed by the president. How do people buy in? And, and, and I say that a great question. after having conversations with a lot of people that say, I want to buy an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. I believe the technology is there, but the infrastructure is not there yet. That's, that's yeah. the push off. So part of the clean energy laws that were signed by the president in, includes $7.5 billion to build out clean uh, charging infrastructure for electric vehicles. Because you're right, nobody's going to buy an electric vehicle if they can't find a place to charge it up. I mean, you can always plug your car into your three-prong plug in your garage. But on the if road, you if you have a garage, exactly. But on the road, or if you don't have a garage, you want to be able to have access to that infrastructure. So Michigan is going to get, I think, 100 10 million dollars from the federal government over the next few years to be able to build out that charging infrastructure in addition to what Governor Whitmer is already investing. A lot of the utilities in partnership with them want to see this charging infrastructure out as well. So the infrastructure is a piece of it. Buying in when you say that consumers are going to get a $7,500 tax credit off the top at the dealer for a new electric vehicle and a $4,000 tax credit if they want to buy a used electric vehicle. So we want consumers to buy in, if you will, to be able to be incentivized to make the switch. I know you talk about years out, but what about six months from now? Is there something tangible that people will be able to see to see that progress? Well, be that actually the building of that uh, EV infrastructure, the charging, it's happening right now. The money has started to flow to states, so you should see within the next few months new charging stations being erected. The tax credits for electric vehicles, they're available to consumers right now. The tax credits for businesses who want to manufacture electric vehicles or batteries or solar panels, they're available right now. So people will start to see more and more stories. In fact, there was a story in the New York Times yesterday, this week, about how much of this development is happening as a result of the laws that were passed and signed into law last year. Appreciate your time. You bet. Thank you so Thanks. much. Appreciate it.